Welcome everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and uh, I hope you can hear me uh, well. Um, so uh, I have 20 minutes to share with you um, uh, really the nexus between uh, the chemical part and the mechanical part of uh, rotating equipment. Uh, we've had a few presentations already talking about uh, um, the aspects of um, So, um, I will speak to you first briefly about uh, an issue, uh, subject that is well known to all of you. Or probably it's uh, deposits on bearings, and the result of a uh, possible result of that is the uh, um, results of formation of uh, temperature excursions. Uh, um, we will also go in more detail uh, how you can possibly resolve those, and we'll share you some case studies. So. First of all, I'm sure we you attended the, the keynote speaker from uh, uh, Linde Ulf Opkirch here talking about deposits on compressors, um, better known as a varnish. Um, and so one thing you certainly cannot do with varnish is generalize it. There's really dozens of uh, chemistries and uh, varnish. It's very dependent from uh, first of all the um, the operating conditions uh, of uh, the, the, the equipment. I think about if it is uh, if it is um, a steam turbine uh, working in base load, or is it compressor on a gas turbine, uh, uh, twenty four seven uh, with peak uh, loaded. Um, depend also from the formulation of the oil. Just think about the evolution lubricants has been going on in the last uh, uh, decade uh, from base oils over additives. And last but not least, absolutely important, uh, it is the contamination that influence oil degradation and oxidation. So, bottom line, varnish is certainly an oil-derived product and uh, it can come uh, in different formulations. So, the, the two impacts that we have seen and, and in this short presentation that I will try to cover is, uh, is the nexus between what you see on the mechanical issues like wear, uh, like vibration temperature, but are usually precursed by mechanical changes. The first one is the increased wear uh, created by varnish, um, because you, the, the surface asparagus are, are then uh, created by, by these deposits um, that will then result, uh, because of the polarity of the varnish, which is attracted to the metal, the white metal, is going to, to really influence and break the hydrodynamic wedge, oil wedge, or the film, uh, assuring hydrodynamic lubrication conditions. Uh, and if you uh, are uh, temporarily uh, causing effects on that, you can have metal-to-metal -metal contact. Uh, typically, uh, you can see that uh, because uh, a varnish is uh, very poor, like I say, it will then attract the, the, the white metal surface. Um, and also, but at least uh, what we often see, as you can see later in the pictures, that the, the varnish also had a capacity to attract like uh, um, dirt, like silica, like metals, and creating uh, this famous uh, sanding paper uh, or sandpaper-like surface effect. To show you the evidence of uh, possible increasing wear, uh, you see here a few pictures, uh, and uh, we see the one in the middle, you can clearly see the scars uh, uh, coming from uh, uh, this additional wear which is occurring. Um, we have some more pictures here, again here the picture in the middle uh, with these um, different uh, metallurgic uh, effects that are taking place uh, by this uh, um, oil film, which is, uh, of course, uh, creating this uh, um, effect by the varnish. Uh, Trust bearings uh, here also with this, uh, this effect uh, on the white metal and uh, creating visible signs uh, of wear and also here on this axial bearing. Besides the wear effects, uh, and the one which is uh, today for, for the industry uh, um, and, and quite unknown uh, phenomena and underestimated is the temperature effects that is created uh, by the varnish. Um, as most of you will know, varnish is in fact, uh, <laughs> it has also a good characteristic, it's a pretty good insulator. Yeah, and so, uh, and uh, the fact that you create this uh, insulating effect, uh, it results in, in one of the, the lack of cooling. Yeah, as, we, as we all know, uh, 
one of the major characteristics of lubrication over lubricant is uh, dissipating the heat or creating a cooling. Mm -hmm. um, so once that is uh, 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 not happening in, in a normal way, uh, uh, like on journal thrust uh, bearings, uh, uh, on rotating equipment, uh, it will uh, mostly uh, result in uh, temperature uh, excursions on the bearings with some typical uh, phenomena uh, which we want to share with you. And like I said, it is uh, today, still every day, we, we have applications where uh, this effect cannot be explained. Um, we give you a, a typical example just to show you. This is from an offshore gas turbine um, where um, the, you can see uh, the red line uh, on, the upper, on the upper graph. It's the bearing uh, tree temperature. And we can see, recognize these small uh, peaks, uh, which is then uh, having uh, this a constant increase. Uh, it's like uh, uh, the peaks will decrease, but at, at the end, you will see an ongoing, if you make a trend, you can see there's an ongoing trend of increase of temperature until you're really coming in this area where it's approaching the, the uh, too high temperature. And the, the, um, in this case, the gas turbine is going out of service. And you see that after going out of service, then it will repeat and it will get even worse. In combination with that, because of the oil film which is disrupted, you can also often see that uh, the vibration is going to start to increase. Uh, we see the bearing three uh, creating this vibration, where on a bearing two we see it even more significant. Uh, and after consulting this OEM and user, it was explained because the bearing two was more rigid. Another good example here over a 500 uh, trend, uh, 500 day trend, uh, you recognize again this uh, uh, peaks, uh, peaks increase uh, over the time. And uh, again, as you can see, if you would uh, draw a regression to this line, uh, you can see that the, the, the increase is occurring. Now, what you also see is a sawtooth graph. And often uh, we receive the question, why is this typical, this sawtooth graph with this uh, progressively more uh, extreme temperature spikes? Can we explain that? Uh, yes, we, we have to look at that uh, here. To understand that is to combine the temperature uh, uh, relationship um, together with the um, position of the vertical shift uh, or the position of the, the rotor. Um, so here we see the, uh, the bearing temperature spike and uh, the rotor position. And let's now try to look at how this was going to happen in reality. So here we make a, a drawing and we have uh, the, the oil film, we have uh, uh, the, the bearing in gray, and we see then uh, the, um, basically here we can see the um, varnish layer uh, starting to build up. I repeat that the varnish is like a polar product, it's like a polymer, so it's, it has a, a real tendency to grow. Right? It will attract more varnish, and um, here we see on the right side, we see the position of the rotor, and then we see here then the bearing temperature. Let's see what's going to happen. So the layer you know, of the, the varnish is increasing, more varnish is attracting to, to the, this first layer of the varnish, and um, the oil basically is then uh, creating a, a, an increase of temperature because it's unable to, to really uh, dissipate uh, the, the heat or cool the bearing sufficiently uh, uh, during the time. The layer is increasing. Again, we see the auto position already moving until you are going to see an extreme of temperature. Uh, in some cases, we have seen um, Turbines going to the 150, 120 degrees C. And sorry for this. We come to the highest temperature. And then suddenly, when the force moved, the shaft is becoming greater than the film strength of the deposit or the varnish, if you want, then it is going to wipe off that layer of varnish, as you can see, and resulting in a sudden drop of uh, temperature. 
then automatically you will come back to a smaller layer of varnish. The varnish is not disappeared, so it be clear. And you will then uh, again uh, have a lower temperature, and then you will have uh, um, a normal rotor position, which is explaining this salt heat curve. Now, we receive very often the question then, can we do something about this? And we notice, uh, of course, the temperature of the bearings uh, or maybe visual control. Of course, the number one reaction should be make sure you have done the right oil analysis. I will not argue that. Uh, we can discuss that, of course, uh, in later sessions. There will be different uh, sessions uh, highlighting the importance of oil analysis. Besides detecting the right oil parameters and detecting presence of varnish, is there anything you can do to just to avoid this further increase of bearing temperatures? Because you have to realize that for a lot of operators, this is meaning that if you achieve this high bearing temperature, usually the equipment will have to go out of service. That is the last thing that uh, operators of uh, the equipment want to see happening. Can we manage these bearing temperatures, control them while being in operation and make sure that they don't uh, increase and that can that we basically control them better? There are two ways of doing this. You can either start treating the oil and, and cleaning up, decontaminating the oil and like I told you, remove that amount of varnish. And there's a technology available based on uh, uh, this uh, resin technology, uh, it's chemical filtration. Um, and uh, basically what we are trying to achieve here is uh, as quickly as the oil is clean, uh, we can uh, have this reversible process of deposit formation. I repeat, the deposit formation of varnish is a reversible process. We are able to bring back the varnish which was deposed, bring it back into solution. That is done over this varnish mitigation and system decontamination technology, which is then used uh, in bypass on the oil reservoir. And will it then help, help you to resolve? Partially, yes, and, but it needs time. And unfortunately, today, um, with a lot of equipment, and, and sorry today, I think about uh, the COVID-19 uh, situations where people cannot go on site and other, not available on site to, to um, access the equipment easily. Um, Fluitech has been working uh, since now uh, six years in working on this solvencer um, technology. And solvencer, I will go and explain you later what it involves. Uh, it is the combination of uh, solvency enhancement, solvencer, solvents, is solvency enhancement uh, and it is also a, one of the products which uh, is helping us to uh, helping achieve uh, and the solar impulse uh, label which is uh, a famous um, label to uh, improve um, world's uh, ecological and co2 reduction so the one of the the, the aspects of solvency is that uh, when we uh, increase solubility and uh, my colleague Christian Soto will be presenting you this uh, this afternoon uh, in, in more detail on um, how solubility, uh, what are the forces into an oil. But briefly for you to explain you that it's a chemical uh, effect, uh, balance effect who can take place uh, between the deposits uh, or any product into the oil and the products deposed. Um, and this Le Chatelier principle uh, law is saying that products will always go from the highest to the lowest concentration. And that means that here um, we are able to uh, create this reversible process of varnish. We can influence that. And one of the drivers to accelerate this and is like you can see here, you see the metal of the bearings or the gearbox or the valves with this brown layer of varnish that the solubility can be uh, improved, then you can also have uh, products uh, bring, bring in solution, um, which is, of course, for industry, uh, a big game changer. 
Um, so the solvents of technology uh, available in different formulations and different uh, uh, products available from the application. But uh, let's assume this is uh, uh, one of the uh, gas to steam turbines, water equipment, and we are going to by applying the solubility case, we are able to dissolve layer by layer, uh, layer by at a time, uh, the varnish and bring it back into solution. So it's not a sudden dump uh, of contaminants, which is often happening by using detergents or dispersants. This is not the case. We are applying here 100% uh, base oil, which is going to be um, increasing the solvency and layer by layer dissolve until you will have a 100% decontaminated lubricating system. You understand that this is, um, there is no risk uh, by applying this. This product is 100% compatible with your uh, rotating fluid. Uh, and also very important, it doesn't need any flushing, any cleaning. We are just improving the solubility. And just think about that solubility is like a small bucket uh, that we can then uh, um, increase uh, in size and have a, a much higher amount of varnish that can be then uh, uh, taken into solution and avoiding to form this, uh, this famous uh, deposits. To finalize uh, my 20 minutes, uh, I have just for you a uh, uh, case study. Um, we have now, of course, uh, much more, but uh, the time is limited. This is uh, one case study, which is from a crack gas compressor in a refinery. Um, we applied uh, one of the uh, solvents of technologies. In this case, it's uh, the product is uh, named Becom, and you can see by uh, applying this, uh, it will enhance and, and improve uh, significantly the MPC value within a very short time. MPC, which is in the region of 22, which is caution, uh, and will bring us back to a level which is uh, much lower. But more important is that the immediate impact uh, on the bearing temperature increases. And we see here that the spikes, uh, after adding the, the, the solubility enhancer, is disappearing. And you can see that uh, uh, initially we have some uh, small spikes, but then after that, the bearing temperatures are totally stable, proving that the layer of oil is again in this 100% hydrodynamic normal condition and helping to cool down the surface. So. With this, um, I have two conclusions is that uh, solvents are in combination possibly with uh, contamination control, but mostly the solvents will help you to prevent the formation of this varnish, stop this bearing temperature spikes. I would say, but last but not least, focus very much on your oil analysis. Make sure that you monitor an MPC test as it will help you to uh, um, detect early warning signals of these possible uh, deposits.